This mini gaming PC might look a little odd, but what we've got here is actually packing the world's most powerful iGPU, along with 16 cores, 32 threads, and 128 gigabytes of RAM. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking an early look at the upcoming Chatree Tank Pro Max. We've seen this design before from other manufacturers, and when it comes down to it, this is coming from the source. Chatree is the company that kind of makes these for other companies, and then they put their branding on them. So there's no doubt we're going to see a few manufacturers release this, possibly with different names. But what we've got here is their new Tank Pro Max. And in the past, when we saw this design, known as the Tank 03 or the Tank Pro or the M1A, whatever you want to call it, it's usually powered by an Intel CPU and backed by an NVIDIA GPU. But with this, we're rocking all AMD because this is powered by the AMD Ryzen Max Plus 395. 16 Zen 5 cores, 32 threads, the Radeon 8060 Si GPU, and up to 128 gigabytes of unified memory, running at 8,000 megatransfers per second. I was lucky enough to get my hands on one of these for some early testing, and it really came plain Jane. We got the mini PC itself and a 280 watt power supply using a barrel jack here, I mean, we'll have more than enough for this system. But keep in mind, this is configured in a way where we can do up to 120 watt TDP with this chip. When it comes to storage, over here on this side, they made it really easy to get into. We've got two M.2 drives. I've got a two terabyte and a one terabyte, but you can do up to eight terabytes over here on this side. So two four terabyte drives. And this came to me bare bones. I added my own storage. But when I say bare bones with a system like this, it is a bit different from other mini PCs or PCs on the market because the RAM is already here. It's configured along with that Max Plus 395. Another cool thing we have here is the ability to change your power mode on the fly using the uh, dial up front here. Quiet mode or blue mode should be around 65 watts and that might not sound quiet, but for the Max Plus 395, it's a little lower. Green, it's gonna be balanced up to 85 and red is gonna be our performance mode. It'll take it all the way up to 120 watts. When it comes to I.O. on the system, as you can see up front here, we've got two USB 3 ports. These are actually 3.2 ports, a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, full size SD card reader and USB 4. Around back from the left to the right, we've got our power input for that 280 watt power supply that comes with this thing. Four more full size USB 3.2 ports dual HDMI 2.1. We've also got dual 2.5 gigabit ethernet and a full size display port. So we've got a lot of IO on this, but I do wish we had another USB 4 port around back. And of course, when it comes to the overall specs, like I mentioned, this is powered by the AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395. 16 cores, 32 threads based on Zen 5. We've got a base clock of three gigahertz with a boost up to 5.1. This chip contains the Radeon 8060 Si GPU, 40 compute units based on RDNA 3.5, and it'll clock up to 2900 megahertz. This one here has 128 gigabytes of LP DDR5X RAM running at 8000 megatransfers per second. It also has Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.3. This is more of a first look video. We will be doing some benchmarks and some testing. There's a, a couple things that I do want to get done with this in a future video, so definitely keep an eye out. Let's go ahead and jump right into Windows. So I've been up and running with the system for a little while now, and it's been working really well. Uh, I haven't run into any issues. I've got all of the drivers updated. Uh, I've got a bunch of stuff installed that we're going to be testing out. As you can see, we've got the AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395. This is the 128 gigabyte model. And out of the box, it looks like we've got 32 for system. And if we check out that Radeon 8060S, we've got 96 gigs dedicated. I usually half this out because I kind of want to just use it as a gaming machine, but I think we're going to have plenty for system RAM up to 31.6. And of course, 96 gigs for the iGPU is way more than we'll need here. And the first thing I wanted to show you were the three performance settings. So I've got GPU Z running here. I've also got hardware info. I'm going to run a stress test on the CPU. And right down here, we've got our wattage. Right now, this is known as quiet mode. So the light on the front of the unit is blue right now. If I switch it real quick, balanced mode, we'll take it up to 85 watts. You can see we're kind of pegged out right there. And then of course, all out performance mode here, 120 watts, and it will sustain this. Obviously it's gonna get a bit louder. A uh, cooling fan here is spinning up a little bit, but it's not crazy. 
and temps are looking pretty decent the way it is. I'm going to be testing at 120 watts across the board because I don't have to worry about battery power with this. I want to get as much as we can out of this Max Plus 395. First up, we've got Geekbench 6, single core, coming in with the 2,835, multi, 19,512. And I'll tell you, with this chip and other systems, I've been able to take it up to around 140 watts, scoring around 21,000 in multi. And I do think with the cooling system here, we could take the wattage up a little bit on this. Checking out 3D Mark for some iGPU testing. We have Steel Nomad coming in with a total score of 2,205, and our FPS was 22.05. And the final one I ran here for this video was Time Spy. We got a total score of 11,179. And this is getting real close to the highest score that I've seen on one of these, up to around 12,800, but that's with a 20 watt boost. Remember, we're in performance mode here through all of the testing, up to 120 watts. Now it's time to see how this thing handles PC gaming, and the first one I wanted to test here was Borderlands 4. Unfortunately, even on the 8060S with this system, if we don't want to go way down with the settings, we will need enable FSR frame gen. But with it enabled, I mean, it works really well. Up over 100 FPS on average, 1440p high with frame gen on. Taking it down to 1440p medium with FSR set to balanced, you can manage around 68 on average but getting a bit more out of it is super easy with frame gen. Next on the list, we've got Spider-Man 2 at 1440p high with FSR set to balanced. With FSR set to quality, I mean, some areas, it really does seem like it's kind of fallen on its face. So I went balanced with it. No frame gen for any of the other games that we're gonna be testing here. I just wanted to see how these work. And yeah, that 120 watt mark, if you take a look at Afterburner in the top left-hand corner, right at the end there, you can see we're at 119. This is working great. With something like Forza Horizon 5, we don't need any kind of scaling. We're at 1440p Ultra, and even in Extreme, we can see an average of around 82 FPS. It does drop it down quite a bit, but at Ultra with no FSR at 1440p, we're averaging 118 FPS. And uh, if you take a look at our VRAM usage, we're a little under eight gigs, and that's how it is at the Ultra preset. Going to Extreme will take us over 12 gigs of VRAM, but we've got 96 with this, so we're not gonna be running out anytime soon. Marvel Rivals performed pretty decently. I would probably take it down to high settings because at 1440 Ultra with FSR set to quality, we're averaging 67 FPS. And there's probably areas with a lot of explosions, bunch of characters on screen where it could dip. High would still look great here, or you could always take FSR to balanced. And the final game we have here is Cyberpunk 2077 No Frame Gen. We're at 1440p Ultra Preset, and at Ultra, it does take FSR 2.1 to quality. I've noticed that on these RDNA 3.5 chips in certain games like this, changing FSR to 3.1 instead of 2.1 can net a bit better performance, but I just left it right there with that Ultra Preset to see what it would do, and we're averaging 74 FPS. The last thing I wanted to talk about here were average CPU temps, or rather average APU temps with this Ryzen Max Plus 395. When it comes to 1440p gaming, this thing was sitting at around 73 degrees Celsius on average. The fan on this isn't kicking up as high as I thought it would. I think with some adjustments, we could probably take that down, but we're not anywhere near thermal throttle. And even through all of my tests, the max we reached was only 81 degrees Celsius and that's in performance mode at 120 watts. And of course, taking it to quiet mode, which is gonna be 65 watts or even balanced mode, will be much lower because that wattage isn't gonna be spiking as high as it is here in performance. So far, performance is great. I mean, it's definitely on par with other Ryzen Max Plus 395 systems. Uh, the cooling system here does seem sufficient even at 120 watts, but I know that we can get more out of this chip there's certain third-party applications we can use to take the wattage up. And of course, one of the main use case scenarios for a lot of people with that Max Plus 395 are large language models, given that we've got that 128 gigabytes of unified RAM, uh, dedicate 96 to the iGPU. And that's something I'd like to test in a future video. So if that's something you're interested in seeing, it'd be really cool if you could hit that like button and think about subscribing. 
And once the launch comes closer for all of these other manufacturers, I will post it up in my community section. But uh, that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.